Hey, I'm Brandon Lee. I made the short film Morocco Arise, and this is gonna be my director's commentary where I take you through the making of the film. If you wanna see a longer version of my travels, I'm also posting a filmmaker's vlog where I go through the entire shoot from beginning to end, so stay on the lookout on my channel for that. And if you wanna learn filmmaking from me, I'm posting links to my film school Unscripted Studio as well. Okay, let's get started with the commentary. First of all, if you're not familiar with who I am, I'm a traveling filmmaker and I've made dozens of short travel films about the different countries and cultures that I've been to. Some of them have gotten recognition from National Geographic, BBC, Vimeo Staff Picks, Vimeo's Best of the Year. I also won a Webby Award. And if you want to see those travel films, some of them are on this YouTube channel, but I've posted a lot more on my Vimeo page. That's my portfolio page and I'm posting a link to that in the description of this video. Okay, let's talk about Morocco Arise. This was a passion project for me, which means that I had no client, it wasn't a commercial. I just went out there because I've always wanted to go to Morocco and it's been a dream destination of mine for many years. I started planning this trip during the pandemic and I thought I was gonna get out there in early 2022, but the borders remained closed longer than I expected. Once the borders were open again, I got out to Morocco as soon as I could find time and I started shooting the film. I spent about six weeks total over two different trips from October to December. This is a great season to visit, by the way, because the weather is pretty mild. My goal with this film was to weave together the different landscapes and cultures and events to create a film that celebrates the powerful spirit of the people of Morocco. This was also a big challenge to me as a travel film because it was my first time trying to cover an entire country instead of just one city or a region. So my travel films are not scripted and they're not storyboarded, they're improvised. But I always start with a few key scenes that I want to film. And in this case, what really drove me to get out to Morocco and make a film were two things. One was Yassine Cavalier, who's famous on social media for riding his stallions bareback on the beaches of Essa Oueira and also the Fantasia, which is a spectacular traditional event. So I knew that the bond between man and horse would be a running theme in the film. Some other things I made sure to capture were the tannery in Fez, the Gemma Fana Square in Marrakesh, the nomads in the desert, and of course the delicious food like couscous and tagine. When I first arrived in Morocco, I was solo for a few days, so I wandered around the Gemma Al Fana Square with my camera and started filming the vendors. By the way, if you plan on bringing your camera to Morocco and you wanna get shots like this, make sure that you tip the performers to show your appreciation. I wanted to get footage of the artisans in Marrakesh as well, so in order to make that go smoothly, I hired a guide, and he let me film him driving his scooter around the Medina. So that's how I got these shots. Soon after that, I met a couple friends, Simo and Hichem and they got me permission to film at some of Marrakesh's amazing riads. A riad is a traditional Moroccan house or palace. They usually have a courtyard in the center. It's somewhat similar to an Italian villa or a Spanish villa. And every riad is unique because they're made by hand. And then I rented the Palace Garnata, which is a riad from the 17th century, for an entire evening to film this restaurant scene. I also want to say a big thanks to Usama, who helped out on several of the shoots and shot some of the BTS. After that, I met up with my friend Marco, who is a photographer and filmmaker himself. He rented a car and we started a road trip together. Our first priority was filming Yasin Cavalier. To film him going at full gallop, Marco and I rode on a quad. Marco was driving and I was using a gimbal to keep my shot steady. After that, we went to Ait Ben Hadou, which is a famous site where they filmed a lot of Hollywood movies, including Gladiator. I wanted to get that iconic view of the Kasbah, but there was one little problem. It was raining. So we actually spent the night, and the next day, right before sunset, we got some really beautiful light. As I was filming, I met a new friend, and he took me up to his lookout point. Marco and I spent a long time on the road on this trip, and that's because that's the best way to get around Morocco. They do have domestic flights and they have trains, but those options will only get you to a few of the destinations you might want to visit. We went up to the Atlas Mountains where we met up with a Berber family who were friends with Marco. The plan there was just to film them having dinner, but I ended up spending most of my time filming the kids playing marbles. I was actually caught a bit off guard when the kids started playing and I was using the wrong lens. I was using a 50. I wanted to be on a zoom lens so it would be easier to keep the kids in frame, but I didn't have time. So I ended up using that 50 for the entire scene, which ended up giving it a nice soft look, but it was pretty challenging to keep them in focus. In Telouet, we went to the ruins of a Kasbah. A Kasbah is a fortress, and historically every tribe in Morocco had to build their own Kasbah for protection. This one looks run down on the outside, but inside it's very well preserved, and it felt like walking through a piece of history. 
We happened to have a very photogenic guide, so Marco and I got a lot of shots of him standing against the beautiful walls. We also did a very long drive out to the Zagora Desert, which is a desert in the eastern part of Morocco. We went there to film the nomads who have been living out there for centuries. Their biggest daily struggle is finding water and bringing the water back home. This man, by the way, is over 90 years old and he's lived his whole life as a nomad. We went to the Merzuga Desert as well, and this is the desert you want to go to if you want to see the biggest sand dunes in Morocco. In order to get these shots, I woke up before dawn and went out with the tour guide before he started his tours. We went to the Todra Gorge, which is the biggest gorge in Morocco. While we were exploring the gorge, we met a local Berber man who showed us that you can drink the water from the Todra River, and he also showed us that he grows his own vegetables. I went up to Rabat to stay with my friend Hichem. Hichem showed me around the old city, and he showed me the rugged coastline where the waves are constantly crashing against the shore, and I had a lot of fun getting up close to those waves. Also in Rabat, I met up with my friend Aicha, who volunteered to wear a traditional Moroccan dress and walk through the white Medina. In post, I did a little color change effect on that dress because I wanted to show the various hues that you might see women wearing in Morocco. Hichem and I then caught a train and we went up to Fez, which is a northern city in Morocco. And the first thing I want to tell you about Fez is you don't want to explore the Medina unless you have a guide because it is an insane labyrinth. The main thing I wanted to film in Fez was the leather tannery, which is about a thousand years old and they're still making leather the traditional way. Because they use animal urine and excrement as part of this process, the smell gets really pungent. So be warned about that if you plan on getting close. My favorite subject in Fez was this man. I really wanted to show his facial expressions as he worked. So I put on a wide angle lens on my camera and I got down to the ground and I looked up at him so that every time he scraped the leather, his face came really close to my lens. Hichem and I also went to Casablanca by train, where we met up with my other friend, Tarek, who is a professional tour guide. So if you need a tour, hit him up, he's great. He took Hichem and me around the whole city and gave us a lot of history and a lot of information. But my favorite part of being in Casablanca was filming the Hassan II Mosque from the seabed at low tide. Because the water had receded, I was able to walk further out into the sea and capture a beautiful image of the mosque connecting with the earth. One of the most exciting parts of this trip was the Fantasia. A Fantasia is a performance where a group of men gallop their horses at full speed and then fire antique muskets in unison. The Fantasia used to be battle training, but now it's just an exhibition for entertainment and cultural heritage. But that doesn't mean it's not still dangerous. I saw riders get bucked by their horses. One of the horses even fell down. Marco actually got some of the best shots of the Fantasia because he was willing to stand in the front row of the audience as the horses rode straight toward him. So my number one tip if you're gonna to go to a Fantasia, bring earplugs. Throughout this entire shoot, the World Cup was happening. At first I wasn't planning on putting it in the film because I didn't see football as being unique to Morocco and I try to focus on the aspects of culture that are unique to the country that I'm visiting. But then Morocco kept winning and winning and winning, and they became the first African team to reach the semifinals. It was basically just pure luck that I happened to be in Morocco while Morocco was winning the World Cup. Of course, I wasn't gonna film the actual games because they were in Qatar. So what I did instead was I filmed the reactions of the people watching the games. I filmed the big screen at Jamal Fana Square in Marrakesh. I filmed at bars. I filmed at gift shops. I even caught up with the tour guides out in the sand dunes of the Merzuga Desert to film them watching the game on a cell phone. Probably my favorite memory from the trip was the celebrations after the victory against Spain. I was in Marrakesh and I followed the crowd from the Medina out to Galiz where they celebrated on the streets for hours. The energy was absolutely electric. I've never felt anything like it before. On to the editing. So editing this film has taken me about three months. I've been working on it in every moment that I have between other projects. It was just something that I came back to and kept working on piece by piece. I did all the picture editing and the sound and the color grading all on my laptop computer. The hardest part about making a film like this is getting the structure in the story because I'm not working with storyboards or a script and this isn't a traditional documentary or narrative. And when you have six weeks of footage, almost seven terabytes, that means there's a lot of options. All I knew is that I wanted it to feel like a grand journey across the country with lots of textures and different feelings in each destination. For instance, in the beginning of the film, in the Medina, I used the dips to black as transitions 
between the different shots to give you that feeling of walking through a Medina because you're constantly going in and out of darkness. I used cross-cutting in the Yassine Cavalier scene in order to create a link between his spirit and the strength of the workers in the Fez Tannery and the freedom of the birds flying in the Moroccan sky. My goal here was to show that everything is somehow intangibly connected. And I used cross-cutting again in the World Cup scene because I wanted to make it look like the World Cup audience was cheering for the Fantasia and for the kids playing football. I wanted to show how everybody in Morocco had joined together to support each other. So thanks for watching my director's commentary. This film was a big challenge to make, but I hope that the end product makes Moroccans feel proud of their country and their culture and gets other people interested in going to visit Morocco. So thank you so much to everybody who helped me make this film. I hope you're as proud of it as I am. I'm Brandon Lee, and I'll see you next time. I know where Brandon is. Oh, <laughs> Surprise!